Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And again, we absolutely need to hear from the EPA. Uh, the people of Oregon and Northwest, uh, the United uh, part of the United States, are keenly aware of the potential repercussions of an open pit copper mine and what those uh, what that would do to sports fishing, commercial fishing in Bristol Bay. Uh, Pebbles' uh, exploratory activities are already having a negative toll. A 2015 Alaska Department of Natural Resources report examined 24 of 1,300 exploratory drill holes and found that eight of those 24 had already leached acidic waste into waterways in the region or have caused other environmental damage. I have a copy of a reclamation petition uh, dated November 3rd filed by 15 Alaska-based organizations and individuals calling for Pebble to assess the damage that they have caused and demanding that they come up with a cost estimate and timeline for remediation. And I ask that this petition be included in the record, Mr. Chairman. Without objection. Without objection. And, and I also sent a letter uh, to the EPA Administrator uh, McCarthy, uh, along with several of my colleagues from the Northwest. This is dated January 30, 2014, urging uh, the Administrator to use the authority given to the EPA under the Clean Water Act to protect the Brist Bristol Bay salmon fisheries from the potentially devastating impacts of the proposed pebble mine. And I would like to enter this into the record as well. Uh, thank you. Um, Senator Halford, I know you fly over Bristol Bay regularly and we saw some pictures. Um, I wonder if you could um, just mention what you see uh, now and expand on the current repercussions of the mining activities. But I, I, ha I want you to be brief because I have an, another important issue I want to ask you about. Well, the last time I flew over it was probably just about a week ago and there was no activity but an awful lot still left on the land. Two years ago, they cleaned up their fuel dump on what they called, uh, I think, Big Wiggly Lake. But there hasn't been much of anything done since then. Uh, and again, the settling ponds where they drilled down through, in some cases, a mile deep into basically what's a sulfur deposit, if it were named for its, lar its biggest mineral, uh, those things have the potential of acid generation. They're sitting there like test cells in the watershed. They're dangerous. Th thank well, you. And I, I need to ask you, too, that you know, we've heard a lot about subpoenas uh, this morning and also lobbying. I understand that there's been a significant amount of money spent uh, by the, the company uh, lobbying as well and, and with a public relations campaign. But could you talk a little bit about this talk about uh, at least 72 subpoenas that are going to be issued or have been issued? What, what's the talk about that among people in Alaska? Is it well, stifling s debate or silencing critics? There's a very sad case that is actually turned around when it went to the Supreme Court. But one of the Constitutional Convention delegates and a former First Lady filed a suit against the state and Pebble on water rights application just to get notice. When they lost at the lower court, Pebble proceeded to try and research to go after them individually for the money, uh, for the legal cost. Uh, they lost at the Supreme Court, so it never went forward from there. But the point is, these kinds of actions stop people from trying to question what's being done out there. The right. same and, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but I also want uh, to, Mr. Chairman to read from a letter sent to Secretary Cohen from an Assistant Attorney General at the U.S. Department of Justice in April. This is in response to a letter Secretary Cohen wrote in March of 2015 to the Department of Justice about the purported independent review of this issue. And the letter from the Justice Department reads in part, quote, the federal courts provide the appropriate forum for resolving Pebble's allegations against EPA. As you are aware, this matter is in litigation in three separate lawsuits filed by Pebble against EPA in connection with EPA's assessment of the potential environmental effects of Pebble's proposed mine activities. The letter continues, your review obviously overlaps with the pending litigation. Then the letter went on to say that Pebble has sought a preliminary injunction regarding Section 404C activities, and the, purportedly the letter said, quote, so it could maintain its legal rights in the status quo, not so that it could launch its own private investigation into the EPA's actions. Pebble's attempting to obtain government information relating to its pending claims against the United States outside of the normal discovery context, close quote. The letter continued. This letter is contained in a report released yesterday by the National Natural Resources Defense Council. That report is titled The Demeaning of Independence, which is a rebuttal to the Cohen Report. And I ask that this report, which contains the letter I quoted, also be entered into the record. 
Thank you. And, and Mr. Chairman, I do, do want to emphasize that it would be inappropriate for this committee uh, to follow up on the advice that was raised earlier this morning for the committee to issue subpoenas for information that might be used by the Pebble Partnership solely as a tool in its current litigation. The Department of Justice knows this and recognizes it, and members of this committee should know that as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back the balance.